Are you the kind of person who journals 793 days of food consumption in a row? No, I never used to be either. Can you hear that sound in the background? That's my robot. That's my Roomba that my daughter got me for Christmas last year, and it's running. His name is O'Reilly. Anyway, so you know you want to journal your food because, you know, abs aren't made in the gym, they're made in the kitchen, but really, you know, they're kind of made in the gym too. So you want to journal, but you keep just ditching it or breaking your streak or, you know, whatever. I have a couple of tips for you. So the first one is whatever app you log into first thing in the morning, using your phone because you know 99% of us I guess have smartphones right now so I want you to take the my fitness pal app or whatever one you use but I use my fitness pal and have been for like I said 793 days take that my fitness pal app and put it right next to the one that you normally log into first thing in the morning when you're sitting there with your cup of coffee sorry Kimo I had to kill your robot there now, you got the two apps right side by side. The only behavior I want you to do first is to train yourself that before you log into, mine is Facebook, Facebook, you're just going to click on My Fitness Pal and open it every day. You know, first thing you do. Do you have to put anything in there? No, you don't have to. But this is going to help you develop a streak. And having a streak turns out to be a really good thing. It's like having new car smell in your car that lasts forever. You know, it's just, it's a bragging point. You know, it makes you feel good about yourself. It's something that you've done positively. But what if you've had a 793 day streak, but you haven't accurately logged all of your foods on all of those days? Who cares? You know what? You've done the first step. Now, I don't want you to go a year and not log your food. Personally, I log every bite. I really do. Um, unless I have the misfortune of getting up very late at night and having something, you know, go to the bathroom and having something like, I don't know what, 9,000 cookies in the middle of the night and fall back asleep and don't log it. But most of the time, even if I have something in the middle of the night, I'm so compelled at this point to open the app, log the stuff, and then I go to sleep. Now, most of us are not eating an enormous variety of foods all the time. We tend to be habit related, you know, habit oriented. You eat what you eat for breakfast, and for most weeks, you might not have 15 different things that you eat for breakfast. Now, at first, nothing that you normally have is going to show up, but here's a tip. After you've been logging for a while, those foods that you typically eat at that particular meal that you set, those foods are going to show up. And then all you have to do is click, 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 click. Now, you know, they say that you should always weigh and measure your foods. But honestly, if you want to just start keep, keeping track and getting yourself into the habit of tracking your meals, just log them. Just get as close as you can. Nobody's going to give you a D minus or take away your car keys if you don't get it perfect. You want to get an idea for where your, your meals are. Um, if you forget, don't kill yourself about it. Just think to yourself, you know, I, I want to remember these things. I want to keep doing it. I personally do not log my water. I find that to be just way too much of a pain in the neck. And I've already got a well-established water intake you know I have my water bottle and I fill it all the time so I don't log my water but I log my exercise and I log my food I used to get really crazed about my exercise intake and I kept upping my exercise all the time and then what I was doing was I was upping my eating to you know to take up that room with all my calories and it was frustrating on my fitness pal because I would see the calories from the exercise added to the remaining calories for my day and it gives me a new total at the end and I was confusing the total calories that I wanted to consume in a day with that new number so here's what I did when I 
add in my exercise. I add in my pre-exercise stretches. It's 15 minutes of stretching and I write one calorie used. Even though it's more than that, that's what I write. If I run for 20 minutes. I write my 20 minute run and the approximate miles per hour and one calorie. So at the end of the day, if I have five exercises, it's going to show five calories. The only reason for that is to not end up exercise obsessed and also to not add an unnatural amount of calories that I could then eat at the end of the day. Now, Here's what I do. I don't judge myself based upon what I'm putting in the book. Let's say I, I go nuts and I have something that, you know, maybe I know I shouldn't have, but I just go nuts and have eight cookies. I'm going to list eight freaking cookies on there and I'm not going to beat myself up about it. Sure, I'm going to say, you know what, maybe next time I don't want to eat eight cookies or maybe I don't want to have those cookies in my house. But I don't judge myself, I just log it. I log it, I log it, I log it. And I don't make it public. I don't need to. You know, I, I just don't need it out there for everybody else to see and comment on because that was screwing with my brain. I have my good days, I have my bad days. Everybody does. But the one thing that I really like is that if something makes me sick, I can go back in my diary and I can look and see, oh my God, what the heck did I eat yesterday? This practice of logging the food all the time, if you are a person that might be considering bariatric surgery, is really essential. I used to do it both on the little paper diaries that they made me log it on and I, I did it on my fitness pal. Really, it's not that hard once you get set and your, your particular foods are in there. You just click, click, click. There's even something that said, oh, you had chicken. You know what you usually eat with chicken? You usually eat sweet potatoes with chicken or squash with chicken. It'll give you a whole big list of the foods that you normally combine together. And it makes it so much easier. If you're really, really crunched for time, then you can do the quick add thing where you just click on the little button um, on your phone, on the MyFitnessPal app, there's a little arc across the bottom of the screen and it has a bunch of buttons and you're gonna click on the food button. And when you do that, it's gonna say what time period you wanna add it to. So you're gonna click on the time period that you wanna add it to. And then you just, you can quick add calories. Like if you eat a Reese cup, the kind that are my failing, <laughs> you know, my big problem. It's going to be 200 calories for one of those big cup Reese cups or 200 calories for an entire two pack of regular Reese cups. We all know how much these things generally are. Just write down the number of calories. When you look back, I don't think you're going to be saying, oh man, those calories, what in the world did they come from? Because we're pretty much going to remember. Usually the quick add calories are the ones where we ate something that was just junk. I don't know about most other people, but usually when I'm eating off my typical radar, that's when I might end up using quick add if I have to guesstimate what it is. Another really great thing is making your own recipes. Um, it just doesn't take that long, especially if you have a scanner on your phone. You can go into recipe mode and add your ingredients and click on the little barcode symbol and you can add your ingredients to create your own recipe. Sorry about that. You're going to add your barcodes and you know like if I make cheeseburger macaroni for the family. I'm going to scan the box of cheeseburger macaroni. I'm going to add the, the ground beef that would normally go into it and then I'm going to scan the bottle of milk and then all you have to do is click on the portions. This is a great way for the little crazy recipes that we create as individuals. I have this recipe that may sound kind of gross, but I love it. It's um, six hard boiled eggs mashed up with a little bit of mayonnaise, and I use regular mayonnaise, you know, Miracle Whip, and then two cans of tuna fish that are drained, tuna with water, you know, in water, and then <laughs> dill pickle relish. I kid you not. It just is something. I mix it all together. It fills up a 
big uh, container. I keep it in the refrigerator and I just put like three quarters of a cup of that out on a plate and eat it with a fork or eat it with some gluten-free crackers. And it is really good protein. <laughs> so with that, you know, how are you going to make that recipe? Well, I just scan those barcodes and it's so easy. And yes, I'm one of those people that buys my hard boiled eggs already cooked for me because I'm that lazy. And I don't like getting those eggshells underneath my fingernails. So, if you're on MyFitnessPal, my MyFitnessPal my name is I'm a Waterbender, all one word, and uh, send me a friend request, and I encourage you to, to log your foods. Maybe you don't have to go crazy like me and log every bite, but at least log in every day. And what that does is it sets up this thing in your brain that says, you know, I will not be defeated. It's awesome. Bye.